I was echoing you. I see how it is. No, you don't. Welcome to Rouse Roth Roundtable, episode 272. My name is Ben Bumhofer. It's Friday night. It's the start of the weekend. It is time to hang loose and have a good time. With me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? I love when Ben tries new things. It's so awkward. It's like watching the usual flow. He's got years of practice and then just boom, right into a tree. It's time to hang loose, everybody. Let's get ready to hang loose. Azeroth Roundtable, hashtag hang loose. Well, let's put it this way. Lagging balls got in my head before I, I started talking. And as soon as I said hang loose, I'm like, okay, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Hang loose. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Hang loose. You know what Talking all the kids are saying. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. who's that, Ben? Oh, it's Ro. Ro, welcome to the show. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while. Glad to be here. It's uh, uh, welcome to the battle for Azeroth Roundtable. Wait, what? What? We're battling here and now. Sure, why not? We're always battling, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I consider it a horde victory because there's three horde players here. So, woo! Well, nice. job, <laughs> job well done. I the guess we won. It's over. Hang loose, everybody. <laughs> Hang loose. We we did it. We did it. Uh, well, okay. So just to kick us off really quick, I would like to tell, talk about something that I did do. And uh, all you hunters who apparently totally agreed with me that your campaign sucked last uh, last episode because I didn't hear a word about it. Um, ben takes your silence as agreement. Yeah, I take your silence as agreement. But I will say that you probably have the coolest mounts, like class mount scenario. That was awesome. I just wanted to share that if you haven't leveled the hunter, I'm the campaign sucks. But that just like little scenario was really neat. Have either of you done it yet? No. I have not. All I've done uh, class mount wise is warlock and shaman. That's it. Okay. Well, let me tell you what happens. And if you if you care at this point, spoiler, eh, whatever. Um, so you know you ben, go through before you, you start. Uh, yeah. I want you to work hang loose naturally into the story somewhere. Okay. Go. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. No, that's really easy to do. So. Um, what, you know, you go through the whole Broken Isles thing, blah, 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 and everything. So the way that the class mount thing starts off is you get a quest to go back to, you know, the, the cult, uh, the order hall. And there's like this golden, uh, what do you call it, envelope on the table that this wolf keeps attacking or something. And the whole thing is, is that it's Odin's invitation for you to join the Great Hunt, Ooh. which is awesome. So you're all like... OK, you accept the quest and then you just go outside and there's one of like the, the Valkyr right there to just take you. So it's like, OK, cool. So you go to the uh, the outside area for the um, whatever the the Odin dungeon is. I forget exactly what it's called because I barely did any of the dungeons, but it's the outside area where you fight uh, the wolf. But it's at night and you show up. And you get to hang loose with Odin, and, like his whole crew first and like feast and everything and just enjoy it and have fun. And then he's all like, hey, you're here for the great hunts and we're going to send you out to go hunt these these spirits and stuff. So it's like awesome. So you buff up with some food and some drink and everything. And then you you head out and then you get to track four different animals and then you kill their spirits and then you track two more. And then you you find like the grand old hawk wolf spirit or something like that then you defeat that and then you get them out and it's just it's su super simple but it's uh it's the the night sky from when you use like the blinky or the the inky black sky potion from the dark moon fair so it's just gorgeous there and it's just awesome and i absolutely love it so hunters you were slightly vindicated because your your mount scenario was just freaking awesome i had a lot of fun and What's even better is that I was there with Skull and Haiti as my my pets because I'm like, you know, I always run around with Skull ever since I caught him. And I'm like, this is like so fitting and we're in Odin's place. and This is neat. And I just I had a lot of fun. I just I had to share that it it totally got me all psyched and stuff to play my hunter. And now that I have gotten the class mount, 
I'm done with my hunter for the expansion. So yay, it's, it's a good way to end it. Welcome to retirement. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I like you did a very good job working hang loose into that story naturally. That was very well done. Uh, also, I like that uh, this story contained the the phrase, and then I killed their spirits. <laughs> that that's what you do. What can I say? It's what you do. Hunters, we love nature. Let's murder it all. Yeah, pretty much. In order to actually get uh, Hemet, Nessingwary, and uh, the little gnome girl from High Mountain to be like followers, mm -hmm. you have to go kill stuff. Like oh, I, I got shocker. the, yeah, I got the Order Hall quest to go down there and see them. So I talked to them, and then like it just dead ends right there. So I'm like, I, I probably have to do those stupid quests, don't I? Yep, you do. When do the Nessingwary quests reach their inevitable conclusion where he says that he's going to send you to hunt the most dangerous game? Mm hmm. And then has Again. you kill a man. And it's just like very like, you know, he's just like, oh, yeah, go over there and, and just hang out on the ridge and just shoot the first thing that runs out. And then you're standing there and the guy pops out, you shoot him, and it's just, oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> Why? And then he's just like, well, you've come this far. <laughs> and then he just gives you a hit list. <laughs> Nessingwary, the secret leader of the Assassin's Guild of Azeroth. Oh, man. It's been a multi-year uh, induction. Well, I sure knew how to assassinate my interest in questing. Oh! So are you a Nessingwary hater, then? Absolutely. I, I find the... Ne For the most part, I find the Nessingwary quests like the epitome of bad quest design in WoW. Okay. John, how about you? Are you, are you still in the uh, Nessingwary zone I don't no know. i never was as soon as they were like here's dita i was like good i'll join them let's burn that dwarf <laughs> good lord you know i i honestly don't mind them because i mean i don't know maybe it just harkens back to you know old school questing or something like that where you know when you kill something you get xp for it i mean granted it's not as much as you get for you know completing the quest but I don't know the, the idea of like, oh, these hunters are out, you know, hey, go kill these things and report back to me and stuff. I think it honestly depends on which expansion it's in that I actually have an issue with it. And it all comes down to what you're actually attacking and killing. I, and I know it's weird that it's coming out like this, but like Burning Crusade, you're basically destroying like an entire landscape of animals. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, not so much. I mean, just having recently just gone through it again, I didn't mind. It's like, oh, hey, go, uh, you know, kill 10 of these things. I think and... it's a numbers thing for me. It's it's yeah. that when he's like, hey, there's a ferocious beast that's killing people or something, it's like, okay, I should go deal with that. You're right. Mm -hmm. When it's, well, I'm a hunter, and I want to be challenged by the hunt, so I need you to go kill 782 deer. <laughs> We got to thin their numbers. <laughs> you just find yourself sitting there waiting for them to respawn. It's like I'm waiting for uh, evolution to happen again so that they just can come back from extinction. It's uh, it's rough. He, You know, he asked everyone to not forget to have their deer spayed or neutered. People didn't listen, so th this is the inevitable. Oh, my gosh. He's the Bob Parker of the World of Warcraft world. <laughs> Is the World of Warcraft version of Bob Barker called Bob Barker? <laughs> no, it's Rob Barker. Rob Barker. Yeah. Okay, so this actually, have we ever discussed here or elsewhere what our favorite quest line from Legion has been? Because no. for me, it, it definitely wasn't a Nezingwari stuff, and I was just trying to think yeah, about this right now. Me <laughs> I would start off and say I think my favorite questing experience was in Azjara, uh, dealing with, and I'm totally going to forget the name of the person, but the, the name of the, the, the drug addicted. Runus or Ruin. Uh, Ruin it, yes. Yes. That was probably my favorite questing uh, quest line in Legion. 
Now, I have to ask, was it just his bits specifically or mm-hmm. the overall uh, Azure Drake stuff? Well, uh, okay. I mean, the Azure Drake thing as a whole was like kind of pretty solid, but that particular bit in it was kind of what was a bit unique and special. And it was something I hadn't really seen them do in a while. I don't know. It, it just kind of pull, pulled on a few emotional strengths. It's like, ah, oh, poor guy. Okay, so you did see the final, like the finale of it, because mm-hmm. we actually talked about this last week. John didn't see the finale. Oh, yeah, that's true. I missed it. I, you know, wow. Sometimes conditions you to turn in the quest and then move on to the next one right away, and that's what I did. And I didn't realize he had spawned and was talking further. So I didn't see his death. Wow. He died. Spoilers. Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't die. No, he does. I have seen it since. Well, I nope. guess he doesn't die. I... No, but he disappears. I would have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was now. a druggie. <laughs> you can go ahead and put that in lore. My character killed him. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that works. That's dead. canon. He's dead. Okay. Uh, John, do you, do you have a, an actual favorite, like, just quest line? I'm trying to figure that out. Um, I I mean, I think the things that got me the first time aren't always my favorite things to go back to. Yeah. So sometimes that's tricky. Like, on repeat visits, going into Helheim isn't always the most exciting thing in, in the whole wide world. But when I first did that, that was such a crazy surprise out of nowhere. Just like, I'm questing, I feel like I'm coming to the end of it, and you're in hell. And it was and you're just, stuck. What is going on? Oh my gosh, this is great. You know, fun fact with that, I didn't hearth out or teleport out or anything with that. I wanted to do the John Jagger version of, oh, this is a dire situation. I can't get out of here. I didn't even try the hearthstone. I just assumed we were trapped. <laughs> no, you can literally turn around and go right out the door. <laughs> oh, okay, good. I think, I don't, well, I'm pretty sure that works. I think I tested it at some point, but um, it, 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 people might be like, now nah, you can't. But I I could have sworn that one of the times I was like, can I just walk out of here? Yep. OK, good. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Another thing that was a really great moment for me from Legion was uh, actually involving the Azure Drakes. You go through this quest line and you see all these little baby uh uh, dragonlings that are hurt and injured and dying and stuff and you're helping them and uh, it apparently just woke up the mother bird instinct in me and I was like I have to protect all these dragons and then I it was very important to me to protect them and then they award you one as part of the quest reward and I, was, go- ju- I was just like you're my new friend and I'm going to keep you with me everywhere we go you found your forever home. And I was just so, I was so thrilled. And then, you know, I eventually forgot about it. But, you know, for a while I had a little Azure Drake following me everywhere I went because that storyline meant so much to me. So, and then you caged her up and sold her around the auction house. No, not yet. <laughs> I assume everybody has it. <laughs> you know, it's funny because those are both part of the same quest line. I think Azara just had strong questing overall. It's like the the high mountain the high mountain stuff, you know, with uh, with Holm High Mountain and the the whole reliving the the Warren and stuff like that. That was kind of cool too. But I just felt like Azara overall had some of the best questing. If I was to choose a favorite zone, that's the one I would choose. High Mountain goes on a little too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that. that was the first zone I went to, which thank God, because whoa, it, it set up like, OK, the rest of these are going to be really long. And then when they weren't, I was like, yay. So but remember that time you saved Mooby or whatever oh, his name it, is. Yeah. And then escorted his, his grandma. <laughs> and then you fell in the water with him and you were like, oh, hold your breath. Hold your breath. I'll get you out. I promise. So fun fact, uh, when I was going through and leveling. Yeah, I forget who I decided that I was just going to keep Mooby. I was not going to turn him in so that I'd always have <laughs> the buff with you all the time. And the buff is only there in that small little area. Yep. So like you leave the area and he just disappears. I'm like, no, 
Yeah, they won't let you abduct that child. <laughs> no way to turn them in. Uh, but, okay, so, Ro, to answer your question, uh, all the, the blue drake stuff in, in Asuna, that's my favorite quest line of the expansion. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I loved all of it. I mean... Um, I've always loved the the dragon flights, especially the blue dragon fr- flight. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's just because you know mage, uh, but like this one, of the reasons why doing uh, Terragosa's Wrath was a lot of fun is getting to interact and see all that stuff and everything as well. But I just I really enjoyed a lot of the just the the interplay that you have with the dragons, and then you know, like John said, the the mother bird instinct of of you know healing the other ones and stuff and. Even more so, you know, Runas, like just that whole area for me was it's one of the best in the game. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, but, it felt the most war. Yeah, I, it felt the most Warcrafty of the of the questing zones, if that makes any sense. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it just felt like the most well-rounded, solid experience. It felt like stuff that was tied to it just felt good it just felt like warcraft questing i it's it, the whole uh stormheim experience it, just the whole story that takes place there for a lot of it it almost feels like you're playing a different game at least that's how it felt like for me a little Storm- i mean it it, yeah. it starts off you know with the the whole you know actual horde versus alliance stuff which actually threw me for a loop i honestly for two didn't... seconds yeah. <laughs> then within five seconds of meeting uh, whoever the, you know, the dude is. I'm like, oh, that's totally Odin, isn't it? It's Odin. But, um, I I mean, it was kind of cool just, you know, learning a little bit about that. And then, like John said, going into hell and all that, that was really cool. I was, you know, pretty stoked about that. And going through, you know, the whole zone stuff, that one felt really long as well. Or as well. Yeah, no, as well. That's right, Ben. You're you're grammaring good. It's okay. Uh, But, you know, it's a cool place. It's just where, I don't know, let's say like um, the value of the, of the four winds was like, hey, here's a culture, learn about them. It almost seems like Stormheim was kind of trying to do that, but didn't go the, the right direction in a couple places. Stormheim you- is my favorite zone to level in. It's my favorite zone of the expansion overall. Um, but I would say it also suffers from being a little too long. I actually think most of the Legion leveling zones are too long, uh, with the exception of, uh, I don't know, the one where you kill the dragon at the end. Yeah, Valshara. Uh, I, that, see, I was originally going to say that whole like main story path because it. I think it's really great, even though you work with Tyrande and Malfurion, which they're so one note in this, it's so annoying. Tyrande. But then... But the the whole I, I think what saves it is the end of that and with what everything that happens to Yasara and that cinematic at the end, it gets me every single time. I like it because when the dragon dies, you get the artifact without having to run a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That makes it the best first zone in the game. I will see that dragon die many, many times because that will always be the first one I go to. It's like, well, we're going there first. We got to watch this dragon die so I can get a unlocked color appearance for my artifacts. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Did it. Now on to other zones. Uh, and it'll usually be Stormheim after that. So, but I, I just, I do think that if all of the zones were the same length as that zone, I think actually all of them would be a lot stronger for it because I can look at each individual zone and I can say, ah, that bit could have been trimmed. Like all the mountain stuff in Stormheim where you're going up and seeing the dragons and all of that, none of that really feels that important or connected to what happens there. I think all of that could kind of go. I know it's part of the quest, but uh, like that stuff felt a little excessive. High Mountain, I think, if they had just focused in on. Well, with High Mountain, there's two different, like, I would say good plot threads in there. There's the dude who's got the pillar, you know, the, the hammer and stuff. And then we also see some of the the I forget exactly what they're called, but the like the evil High Mountain Torin who are Fel totem. the Fel totem. Like you, you kind of see their transformation and kind of, you know, joining in and everything like that. And 
I think that works really well, but because both those stories are kind of long and in depth and everything, it does take quite a while to get through high mountain. And I think that like, I agree with you, it's, it's way too long in that, but I think that in this instance, they're both actually really important plot lines. Well, yeah, because the, the whole point of the fell totem uh, quest line, at least to me, was to show that the uh, that not only were there evil Torin, uh, there were also good and I forget the names of the underground guys. Dude bros. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude we'll bros. call them dude bros. Not only were there evil Torin, there were good dude bros. So uh, the whole thing of like what side's good and what side was bad uh, is it a little bit blurred there. Yeah, I just feel like it was a, a whole arc too long. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of stuff that I felt like could have been trimmed from those zones. And actually, when you go back and do them, there's a lot of stuff you can trim. But mm-hmm. the first time you go through, you kind of want to do everything. So you help the shitty goblins that are clearly murdering people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you get pulled into storylines that aren't necessary and, and that you go down. So... You know, it's uh, it's fine. I like chats arguing with us about Malfurion not being. He's he is bad. I don't care if it's someone <laughs> doing his voice. He has always been that guy. He's always been Toronto. I'm sad because my mentor's dead. Oh, I'm trapped in <laughs> brambles. I got stuck in weeds. I'm the saddest druid ever. And she's worse. Oh my gosh, she's worse. She's like Rose from Metal Gear Solid 2. She's just like, <laughs> our love is such a good love, and you don't know what love is. Oh, I hate them. Oh. Which is interesting when you compare her personality, the, the way she was first presented in the Warcraft 3 RTS, because she, she came across as more like this fierce warrior priest kind of mm-hmm. character. Yeah, and now she just wants to tell me about her love and why it's so good. They deserve each other. She can go lock him in brambles and hang out on an island together because <laughs> I don't want to see it. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, it, it, the thing is that Taronda has, you know, substance that used to be there that's completely gone that I would love to see actually, like, filled out and turn her into more of a character. Like, make her the leader of the Night Elves. Oh, she is? Well, guess what? No, she's not. She's just kind of <laughs> hanging around and, and you know, yeah. dies the attack because malfurion only... woke up you yeah, know exactly it, when i think about toronda and character development the, the one thing i'm thinking of if if only something really dramatic happened to like part of her family or maybe her home if only something really devastating were to occur i uh, would we'll that... never do that <laughs> well let's say let's say you know hypothetically something happens to darnassus Mm. that's crazy that's out of the way why would anyone even go there (laughs) those are the burning questions but (laughs) the thing that i want to know is is she going to have a similar reaction to be jaina 2.0 or technically jaina 1.0 because jaina is jaina like 5.0 now in battle for azeroth so is like she going to have to go through the whole thing and, and like i don't want the strong female characters of this game to just be, oh, well, I'm angry because of, I, I mean, it's legitimate anger. I get that. But when they play it off again as like a one note thing and just that's the only dimension about it, I have such a hard time with it because, you know, I, I've seen Jaina done so well in books and everything, and I'm excited to see what happens in, you know, the new Christy Golden book. I don't want Taronda to follow kind of the same path. I would like to see her rise up, lead her people. And yeah, she could be pissed off and want to kill the horde and with good reason. But I want to see like depth to her. Her and, story and depth- is going to just be Malfurion walks out to stop the horde and he's going to hurt his leg on a bush. It's going to get tangled <laughs> and he's just going to be like, Toronto, my leg. Christmas is canceled this year, and she's just going to be like, the horde hurt my beloved, my beloved, his leg. And then they'll retreat to Stormwind, and she'll have to nurse him back to health. Oh, <laughs> Seriously, though, if, I mean, like, after the events that happen, if Tyrande were to go all, you know, like, very aggressive against the horde and, and uh, taking the offensive, war-hungry and all that stuff, 
it, that wouldn't necessarily be the same as how they did it with Jaina, because with Jaina, I mean, we got to remember that Jaina, for the longest time, was kind of always trying to work the option of maybe both Horde and Alliance can find, you know, uh, a middle ground. Maybe there can be peace between the Horde and Alliance until, you know, Theramore happened and that finally broke her. With Tyrande, she's never necessarily been one to be like, oh, yeah, maybe Horde and Alliance can be at peace. Uh, the only... It, it feels to me that, like, the times that that's happened, Tyrande hasn't necessarily been uh, for it or against it, but for, for a good part of the time, for her, orcs are pretty much the enemy, with, like, very few exceptions. I mean, she's already like that in the game when you meet her. You're, like, on your way trying to help Malfury, and you're like, oh, God, we gotta get him, we gotta get him back. You're, like, doing everything you can to help him, and then she shows up, and she's like, I should shoot you. You're like, yeah. I'm trying to help the only thing you seem to care about. And she's like, I don't trust you. But you can, and that's you good. can come with me, I guess. But like, I see that, that that's good. I'd rather she have that personality than, than the whole Jaina thing. I, I, I guess that's what I'm saying is I don't think Tyrande is going to be another Jaina because fundamentally, from their history, is. they weren't the same person. She's just going to be more Tyrande? Yeah. Yeah gonna be i'm gonna shoot my owl at you from across the map and really cause you to have a bad day while you're using yeah. your hearthstone that was so great on the charity stream by the way i oh. saw that clip that would be a fun boss fight it's you gotta fight taronda she's at the other end of the map and you just get owls lobbed at you constantly from across the map oh uh, you remember when we did get to fight taronda though in the uh that one Cataclysm dungeon? Yeah. End time, yeah. Yeah, she sent a whole bunch of shadow cats at you. Yep, and you had to stand in the moonlight. Yeah, that that was cool at the time, but I'm, I remember that was the one that we always had like the most trouble with. Uh, that's because that's there was a lot of DPS. That's because yeah. people didn't use the actual good strategy, which is if you just typed, what can you tell me about Malfurion? She would just stop everything. <laughs> And she'd just be like, let me tell you about my beloved. My beloved is the greatest love. You will never know love like my love. My love, he and I. Our love is loving love. Our love is the greatest love that ever loved love. Is it like a red, red rose? Our love <laughs> is like the deepest ocean. You, you can't fill it fully with love because our love is already there. It's just it's who she is, man. <laughs> anyway, you could oh. DPS her down while she did that. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I didn't know about that. Well, you know, everybody go in there and try it. Give it a go. See how it goes for you. OK, so we've talked about our favorite questing zone in Legion and stuff. We've talked about Toronto for a bit. I have another question I want to toss at you guys. Like, is there anything when it comes to the story of what's ahead of us for Battle for Azeroth? And mind you, I've cheated a little bit because I've gone through some of the Alliance questing zones on the beta. but. Uh, like looking at the Horde side and stuff, is there anything that you're looking to get more information about? Is there any aspect of the plot that you're interested in seeing develop? Like when yes. it comes to the, the story. The question, wh why? Why? Yes. <laughs> yep. And we are definitely not going to talk very deep about that subject tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting, putting the kibosh on that right away. It's almost like we've talked about it before, but. Uh, on multiple shows several times. <laughs> That's true. Well, you know what? Uh, why not? <laughs> That's a good counter. Oh, shit. I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't considered Boom. this. What? Whoa. <laughs> this expansion makes so much sense to me now. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Want to burn down a tree? Why not? So, for well. me... Want to kill a Brad Pitt-looking king of Stormwind? Why not? Go for it. It's fun. <laughs> Do you want to kill the Dark Lady? Why not? She's right there. Do you like plague? Throw it on people. Why? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to see the return of Rathion, guys. I, I, I don't know about you, but well, I feel I... like Rathion was... I, I wish we had seen Rathion in Legion. They've already explained like why they decided to replace him in Legion because time-wise it didn't seem to fit and stuff like that. But I feel like Rathion should still have a role to play in upcoming events, especially considering we may be having Old God stuff happening soon and, and oh, all that. Okay, so. 
I've got the perfect way for him to to be brought back in. Okay. Okay. He's gonna be in one of the zones, and you kind of walk in and everything into a bar. You see him. He's drinking. Yeah. And you start off with a you know like text bubble Rathion. He just says, "Oh fuck! I didn't think anyone would live. Now what do we do?" And that's it. <laughs> just that. I. I think the problem is now it's not a good time either because now it's been so long. It's just like, why are you here? Like, I feel like there's just going to be why a not? moment where he's like, surprise, it is I, Rathion. And you're just going to be like, yeah, what's up, man? Where you been? Like, right, there was still... a whole, I know you were in the many deaths of Chromie scenario, but did that count? What are you doing? It's just, uh, aren't you excited to see? I'm back. Yeah, no, not really. What are you doing here? We're fighting each other again. Is this... See, I would agree with you, but there are two characters who recently showed they can pull that off, and their names are Illyria and Turalyon. Yeah, yeah, but but they were a loading screen for years. Yeah. Rathion's just, you know, mentioned in a quest here and there. (laughs) It's just a creeper dragon. (laughs) Hey, hey, what, what you guys doing now? Cool. Remember when I said this was going to happen? I was so right. You owe me five bucks. Told you. <laughs> but he's like, he's supposed to be Anduin's uh, best friend and stuff, right? I mean, now that Anduin's the king, you think now would be a perfect time for Rathian to, to swoop in and maybe advise Anduin on stuff. Oh, uh, just watch. Gen will be mad at, at, uh, at him. He's like, oh, you killed my daughter. Wasn't that Sylvanas? It was Rathian. Kill him now. <laughs> Rathian is just like the ultimate... I just I, he's just like, what is his his vested interest? Because originally it was I need to prepare you for the Legion. Then the Legion showed up and he was like, mm-hmm. no nope. peace. I don't want any <laughs> part of it. So now he shows up and he's like, I freaking told you so. <laughs> like, and we get to turn around and go, yeah, we won. No thanks to you. And he's like, yeah, but who said it was happening? Didn't he, like, basically bet on the Alliance and side with them and wanted to kill the Horde? He believed that the only way to beat the Legion was to be unified uh, as, like, a single front. And he decided that he was going to help the Alliance win. Ah, okay. Which is really messed up because I am the reason he was born. Mm -hmm. uh, And I helped him kill his dad. Mm-hmm. and he gave me daggers, and I thought we had a special relationship, but apparently Taronda and Malfurion are the only ones who get to know love. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's different types of love when it comes to Rathion. See, he's just really closed off. He, I mean, he, did you give him a hug? I just want to know Malfurion and Taronda love, but I guess I never will. Well, maybe it's just not the... You know, Rathian's not right for you. He's he's manipulative. He's, you know, kind of abusive. And I mean, if you think about it, the presents that he gave you, they're just for killing. It sounds like somebody I know. <laughs> really? Who? <Ooh. laughs> anyway, what can we talk about? <laughs> this is my good transition for the show. <laughs> Wow. Good job, John. So Good I'm going to handle all transitions going forward. Anyway, what should we talk well, about? Okay, let, let, let's go with this. I'm going to DBZ it. Oh, no. So, you know, if, if you go Dragon Ball Z route, you have progressively harder and harder and harder villains that you're facing. You know, we, we went with, uh, you know, Illidan to the Lich King to... Deathwing. Deathwing, then kind of downgraded to Garage, <laughs> and then you know uh, Archimonds, and then you know Sargeras. I, I would say that like Sargeras would be the the Majin Buu of the DBZ world, right? Yeah, especially when you started fighting him, and he was like, "Boo, no, like you." <laughs> I was like, that doesn't even make sense for him to say. I would say, but we haven't really fought Sargeras yet. I mean, we took on Argus, but I would say we still haven't really fought Sargeras. I think that you could still say that Sargeras uh, can be saved for 
you know, the the final final chapter of Warcraft. And at least for, we've gotten to meet Sargeras, you could say. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah. I just every time I hear Sargeras, it. The word, the name is always followed by me saying pizza and pizza wings. And wings. <laughs> I, I, I cannot get past it. Every time his name is said, doesn't matter if it's in a serious voice, you could get the best voice actor in the world to be like, Champions, we have to defeat Sargeras. And in my mind, I just hear, Champions, we have to defeat Sargeras, pizza and wings. And it, I cannot sorry, take that character. <laughs> Favorite thing, Sargeras. <laughs> Sargeras. Pizza. Please tell me that that's like not just a Phoenix chain. Uh, it, it's I've it's never heard of this in Ohio. Okay. So, oh well, is there really a Sargeras? Pizza no, no, it, it, it's, it's called Sardellas. Okay. Yeah, Sardellas. Okay, Sardellas Pizza and Wings, and they have the worst jingle in the world. Sardellas <laughs> Pizza and Wings. Only Sardellas makes my favorite thing. Sardellas. Anyway, wow, I, lovely singing. I think there's a title for his show, Pizza and Wings. You're good to go. Yeah, I was just writing that down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, as far as like you were mentioning, what's the next step up? It, it feels like the clear next step, obviously, is Nazoth, which is supposedly the the last main remaining uh, old god that we have yet to to really go up against. Uh, Did- we I would kill those other gods though, or just like poke them in the eye. And... Well, that that's the thing. I mean, that that's not all too clear. I, I and I think from what some of uh, the last chronicle books mentioned was that you know it, just because we defeated them in that form, it doesn't mean that they are entirely outright destroyed. Like Yog Saron's influence still lingers and is corrupting and all that stuff. So. Uh, I guess the next step up from Sargeras could be all of the the old gods, and then the next step up from that would be the Void Lords, which created the old gods. And after the Void Lords, I don't know. So what you're saying is, is that we're going to have an old gods of Azeroth expansion. So it's going to be this just... This could like be the old gods of Azeroth expansion, though. And then we're going to kill one of them in the opening scenario... And then the first raid, another one's going to jump into the gladiator ring and find us there. And then everyone's like, what the hell? And then we end up finding, like, Gul'dan number three at the end. So does that mean when we kill that old god in the gladiator arena, like, right after we kill him, he says, that's 100? Yeah. Well, yes. it's actually, he's going to say that's 1,000. Oh, 1,000. He's got up it. Taking it up a notch. God. Oh, yeah, of course. They need to memify it. He needs to jump down and go, it's over 9,000. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We do have access to many alternate Gul'dans through the power of the Nexus. <laughs> it's true. It, it could be a revenge of the Gul'dans. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. IDBZ, you can Nexus. It's it's only fair. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if you need a Gul'dan, I can get you a Gul'dan. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm cheap though <laughs> i know a guy <laughs> hey look. and i guess one of the things that's been teased i i don't want to go okay i'm not going to go sp- too spoilery about stuff but our enemies don't necessarily have to be darkness related they could also come from the flip side of the coin i will keep it at that the head no, the the light, the light. I mean, you look at the scene where the uh, that one Naru tried to co- to convert Illidan over, right? And uh, it, you could say that the light was really trying to force itself on Illidan. wasn't necessarily the most uh, good thing in the world, depending on your point of view. And Illidan, of course, nest- took out that Naru. But uh, Will, would you really say they would go there? <laughs> I think. You really could say they could go there. I, I I think you really could. Those really are the burning questions. Hmm. <laughs> well, you really seem to be stretching. Let me let me put it this way. No, I can't even. Mm. Okay, so there's a way that this could be cool. Mm-hmm. One, as long as it's you know like a new character that they're introducing and not someone that we've known in the past. I think that (laughs) it could be an interesting take on it. Like you can't do anything with the army of the light because now we have the light forged Draenei. 
I mean, unless we're doing the whole like, oh, well, the Life Force Jedi are evil, so therefore the Alliance is evil, so let's kill the whole Alliance. I mean, from my is, point of view, the Jedi are evil. Don't even. Um, so, <laughs> or that if they're doing it, right? But, I mean, if you really think about it, I could see something in our reality where, like, some Naru are, are basically force converting, you know, acolytes and stuff so that they're like zombies. And not exactly like, you know, oh, I'm just Lightforged now or, oh, I'm worshiping the light, but like, honest to goodness, like, I think Scourge, but like light creatures. Mm -hmm. Like, in. In an alternate world, this could be cool. Yeah, I like, don't think it's ever going to come to that. Maybe but... they made a character named, like, Larry. <laughs> yeah. Is he wearing a leisure suit? Uh, it's a she. I know oh, okay. Larry is typically a man's name, but this is spelled L-E-R-Y. L -A -R -Y. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Larry. And she's a Draenei. Yeah. But, I mean, it'd, it'd be a completely new character, not someone that we've faced. Especially not, like, a corrupted hero or something. No, but you did help her in a cave once. Oh, no. See, I don't like that idea. And she I... uh, she can sprout wings. <laughs> Larry can. Did yeah. she drink a Red Bull? Are All they Red... of her abilities are charge-based. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I think that there are cool ways where that could go. And I don't know, like yeah. I don't have high hopes for, you know, rumors of things, but we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm trying to stay positive about everything, which is why now I'm steering us away from that whole idea. Larry creates a zone. And while in the zone, Larry has 40 armor. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes it, all the sense in the world. Does Larry swing a hammer in like a white arc, but the longer you hold it, the more powerful it hits? Yeah, if you let it charge all the way, there's pushback and stun. Oh, okay. Does the angrier Larry gets, the more powerful she becomes? <laughs> no, that is a different okay. character. <laughs> oh, that's that's Cole. Or yeah. Clue. Mm. Clue. <laughs> Clue. Clue, yep. Yeah, yep. don't forget about Clue. K-L-U-H. The angrier yep. Clue is, the more powerful Clue becomes. And Clue has never been this angry before. <laughs> You know, actually, I prefer a different version where uh, the more inquisitive Clue gets, the smarter he becomes. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, that is a good character. We should pitch that. Okay. I think so. <laughs> he tried to stop someone from getting decimated from a, like, say, a Delta bomb or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's when a Delta Airlines flight crashes in your backyard. <laughs> he shoves someone out of the way. <laughs> I've been empowered so, with intelligence. Why did that happen? Ooh. <laughs> I know because I'm Clue. Boy, we got in the weeds on this one. Yeah, we, we did. You got to have to be yeah. a long-time listener to get that call back. Got DBZ <laughs> references, Hulk references. We're, we're digging deep. So, uh, speaking of getting in the weeds, um did you guys ever get the 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 fishing heirloom or artifact? Yes. No. I did. How do you do that? Like, I don't even know how to start it. <laughs> I'm like, this show has just become Ben asking questions about WoW. We, <laughs> this show used well, to be a round that. table. Now Ben's basically just using us like WoW Google. Yeah, pretty much. I do uh, a lot of fishing. Oh, okay. Then I'm not getting it. Okay, we're good then. Uh, actually, in order to, if I, it's been a while since I've done it, but I believe like in order to start the quest line that gets you the artifact you have to have hit, uh, you have to have caught, you have to have done the ach fishing achievements for each of the zones and have like your fishing at max skill. Yeah, you can stop there. Yeah. <laughs> that, I'm good. I also like that Rose now giving information that would be beneficial to the listeners, but Ben's like, it no longer <laughs> applies to me, so please shut up. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> That's what the, was telling Roy. You have to catch each of the rare fish, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you, Telenroid. Te Telenroid? Eh, whatever. I'm bad at names tonight. Yeah. Anyways, so, I mean, we're, we haven't done our Legion retrospective yet, and we're not going to yet. You know, I figure we'll give it a little bit more time, because there is more time, and I've still got more stuff to do in it. Yeah. Hey, they're keeping the Mage Tower open uh, for an extended period of time right before Battle for Azeroth. Ooh. Oh, did they confirm that? That's awesome. They they said that that that's what their plan is. It's it hasn't happened yet, but their plan is they're going to 
have a period of time where the mage tower is just straight up open and not just open for two to three days. So people, I would imagine, would have a good two or three weeks to have one last shot at getting those uh, appearances. Oh, boy. It's going to be some fun. Maybe so, I'll stream it so people can just watch me suffer. Hey, John, since I know you don't look in the Discord too much, did you see the post that I put in there uh, basically saying, I am not doing the mage tower anymore and I'm done and F this? No, what happened to encourage that? Um, I still couldn't get past the first phase, the, the first phase. And I'm like, whatever. I like um, that I there. asked this as if like something weird and outside the norm happened. It's like, oh, really? You're not into the mage tower anymore? What happened? <laughs> There's so many possibilities of what could have happened to make you reach this conclusion. Yeah. Well, and I, I have had very nice people in the discord say, hey, maybe you should, you know, watch videos or read up on this. I have, but anyways, hey so when I'm in and I'm trying to heal and uh, people get one shotted in multiple attempts, I'm just done. Maybe you should get good. <laughs> Boom. There's, there's, there's too much going on for me to heal and DPS and interrupt everything. It, it's not worth my time. I don't care. You know what my version of healing is, is I play with people who are good and know their role. I don't run around in a scenario with, people who are you know in fury spec trying to tank that's not how that works i mean how good looking is the mage tower appearance for your artifact though? it's okay uh, I mean, amazing yeah john is getting the raw end of the deal here his is actually really awesome it's the best looking weapons in the game thank you very much for rogues it's two rapiers that would make stanley billings blush it's amazing ro it <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Uh, my mage tower appearance for destruction sucks, and I think that's the biggest reason why I haven't been mobile bay continue. Also, I would say with the mage tower fight for destruction, uh, it gives me weird flashbacks of doing the the final boss fight for green fire back when it was relevant, and that wasn't a good time. It took me yeah. over a hundred attempts, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figured. I mean, you've got the green fire. That's that's your big thing. Yeah. I feel like I can do it. I just need the patience. And I wasn't born with it, but I feel it, like maybe I it, could have it. Yeah, And the thing is with mine is that like one person dies and then I start over from the beginning and there's like seven stages to this whole thing. And oh. I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm you know what? I'm enjoying going through getting all the mounts and doing the order hall stuff and everything like that. And yeah, it's doable. And yeah, if I work at it, I know I can do it, but I don't care. It's it's not fun for me. Think of how happy you would be when you did it, Ben. The thing is, I wouldn't use it, though. I it, It's just an OK appearance. Yeah, but you'd feel so good about yourself. Nah, not really. You would it change your life. No, it wouldn't. No, it would. You don't how know because because you would be like, man, I accomplished something. I accomplished stuff like, all the time. It would be in your obituary. <laughs> How soon am I dying? It it would be that effective. You'd be like, my goodness, I've never applied myself to anything until this moment. Wow. So <laughs> I'm gonna I just now. I just thought of an awesome question. This is something that's kinda come across my mind more and more as we get later on into WoW's years. It, is it about have... holes? No. Okay. <laughs> It's about appearances, and we've talked, we've had episodes before where we've talked about transmog looks and, and this, that, and the other thing, and like how cool the allied, certain allied races look and all that. But one thing I've been thinking about is that whole carrot of, you know, uh, new mounts and uh, new appearances for weapons and new armor set appearances and stuff like that. It was really cool at the beginning, and I'm not saying it's not cool anymore. But I feel like the appeal of pursuing, you know, certain different tasks to get this appearance or that mount or this look or the other thing, it's losing a bit of its luster because at some point you feel that, well, the things I already have, these appearances, this mount appearance and such like that, that's my favorite one. So why do I want to necessarily go after these others? Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. No, because I'm still chasing the thing that's like that for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, as someone who got the Fox mount that I've you know spent most of the expansion trying to get and everything like that, mm-hmm. and who has most of his people writing it right now, I get it. But the thing is, is that for me with the mounts, there's so much diversity in them that eventually when I'm like, okay, I'm tired of everybody writing the Fox mount because I love it so much. Um, then I still have a whole bunch of different, you know, options and, and things to go to. And, you know, each of my characters is going to have their own, you know, specific mount that they're writing and stuff like that. It's one of those things that I do. Um, it's just like, as much as I love the, the, the tier fall garb, the, the tier five for mages. And it's my, it is still my favorite look in the game. I don't wear it a ton because, you know, I, I do like variety and I like to be able to, you know, go through and do different things, wear different things and have different appearances and stuff. I think it's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm still, you know, I love collecting the pets and having them and everything, but I still only keep, you know, a, a certain few out again, based on the character and kind of what they're going for. I have used the same mount since late burning crusade. Wow. And I still get excited about mounts. Mm hmm. So I, I have a very narrow field of what I like in a mount. Like, I want it to be a smaller mount. I don't want, like, a giant dragon or a huge thing that takes up the sky. It needs to be very agile looking. It needs to look cool. It needs to look unique. And I got one of those, and I haven't changed it since, really. And I've been pretty content with it, but it didn't stop me from, you know, going crazy trying to get all the different ravens for the rogue and all of that because you know you may really like your favorite shirt but eventually you got to change it for a little while that was a terrible analogy because you don't have to change your shirt in a while you can wear your favorite shirt literally every day but uh you know you got to change it up sometimes sometimes you're in a red mood sometimes you're in a blue mood sometimes you're in a zone where your outfit doesn't seem appropriate and you think my goodness, I would get pneumonia. I should change into yep. something that looks warmer. I do that. If I'm in a cold zone, I make sure that I'm in cold gear. Look, how into transmog are you, Ro? Because we can get into this. I mean, <laughs> a fair bit. It's just, I guess overall, the transmog in Legion was okay. I, I think... My favorite transmog expansion is probably Cataclysm. I, I notice I tend to wear a lot of pieces that came from Cataclysm raids and dungeons. Hmm. Interesting. I think that says something about you. See, I got the short end of the stick because <laughs> I don't know what that actually means. I'm just... <laughs> well, if you if you look at the mage sets, it's called the Time Lord's Regalia, and you'd think as a Doctor Who fan, I'd be all over that. But then you look at the hood and it looks like your face is sticking out of a chicken's mouth. Mm -hmm. And then I'm completely done with that. You're not about that? You don't want to be a chicken mage? No, I don't. Not at all. I'm not Billy Hatcher. You could be the guy from Fable and everyone could just be like, it's the chicken chaser. (laughs) Uh, An interesting thing, though, is... Battle for Azeroth is definitely, I mean, from what I've seen from some of the data mining and stuff, especially in the last couple weeks, it feels like they are making a much stronger push on new achievements and rewards for getting like 500 mounts or 400 mounts or this many hundred pets. It, we didn't seem to have that big a push in Legion, but they're making a bigger push for it in Battle for Azeroth. And, uh, of course, the biggest news of all, uh, equal nudity for both male and female night elves with this uh, old school cinematic armor that they put in. Not yet confirmed to be player wearable. Oh, that, you know, they got to make it player wearable. Watch. They're going to make that purchasable as like a cause (laughs) an in-game purchase on the shop. That's going to make people (laughs) mad, but people are going to buy it. Yeah, I'd buy it. Sometimes you got to be naked. (laughs) Like when you're changing your shirts, Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's a window there. Or if you're sleeping and it's hot. Yeah. Maybe when you're, you know, smashing grapes. Yeah, you don't need to be fully clothed for that. I recommend it. Well, At least depending on where you're doing it. Look, grapes stain terribly, Ben. 
And if you're going to get in the vat, you don't want to ruin that armor. Look at you. You're wearing different colors. You don't want to ruin the shade. Go ahead and just just take off what you have. I won't tell anybody. We have a nice <laughs> little privacy screen. It's, it's just, just going you. to be you and me and the grapes. <laughs> If you want, if it'll make you more comfortable, I'll start. Bro, thank you very much for joining us on Nazareth Roundtable. I really <laughs> it. Except for the very end there. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me uh, online. Best places to find me on Twitter at Rowow, R H O W O W. You can also check out the number of different podcasts I do uh, Realm Maintenance for All Blizzard Podcasting. Rolling Restart for talk about World of Warcraft, Hearth Casual for talk about Hearthstone, and most recently, and I will definitely say that this absolutely was influenced by stuff that other people are doing, uh, a D&D show called Plus Five to Hit, which has a, a, a number of podcasters that you may be familiar with doing Dungeons and & Dragons. And uh, yeah. Oh, it's... there will be dungeons. Y right, right. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's like, what if there will be dungeons, but with completely different podcasters? And yeah. a setting. <laughs> what? A completely different setting. It's Com entirely different. Passes. But no, it's, hey, what can I say? I've never been the most original person in the world. And, you know, listening to stuff like There Will Be Dungeons and Critical Role, it got me having the itch to do Dungeons and Dragons stuff after, like, 20 years. And it's like, well, I do podcasts and stuff anyhow. So, yeah, okay. I, I, I jumped on that train. Look, like half we a were other far podcasts. from the first. I can't even begin to, to throw shade. We were certainly not the first people to go, what if we did a podcast? <laughs> we also, as we found out, we're not the first to call ourselves There Will Be Dungeons, but that oh. other show only did, like, one episode, so it doesn't oh. work. <laughs> oh. Wow. I didn't know that. That could have been dangerous. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a reason we, we did look. We just didn't see it. Yeah. So. Well, let me just say that I'm not going to pull a Johnson. But what wait, I will say wait. is that, hey, John, Roe, do you want to know something special? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Last time somebody asked me this, it went bad. Go ahead. Well, let me put it this way. Um, we have something for the fans. We have something that a lot of people are looking for. And that is beta Last time access. some... Oh, okay. Never mind. Go Ooh. Ahead. Yeah. So... Guess what, guys? Azeroth Roundtable has some beta keys to give away. Nice. Does anybody want to know how? I'm leaving how, it out. Ben? Okay, thank you, Ro. <laughs> I didn't want to know. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to keep them for myself and feel important. Yes, I'm going to use all of them. I'm going to make all these new accounts. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and just watch them accumulate and go... <laughs> I have a wealth of riches. All these letters, all these numbers, all of them mine. <laughs> Anyways, uh, because Battle for Azeroth is all about faction pride and everything, what John and I have decided we are going to do is have you send us a screenshot of your character in their favorites, uh, either horde or alliance hub or town or city or whatever. Basically, your favorite place that says, hey, I'm the Horde, or hey, I'm the Alliance. It could be the Cathedral in Stormwind. It could be the the Shadow Cleft place or whatever in Orgrimmar, whatever. It could be you just like standing in front of the uh, the you know Elite Torn Chieftains up in Silvermoon. Ben, just, you know, what if it's me wearing no armor laying in a vat of grapes? Well, that is technically not a Horde or Alliance hub town or city, so I, I don't think that would count. I, uh, think, it's, I think it is. Thank I think it much. is Horde. To action. Have you created a Nightborn and see where your hub actually is? Yes, and it's in that city. And if you go to that area, you are attacked. It is not the city. It's still the city. You are attacked. <laughs> People, send what's in your heart. We can't stop Ben. He's a tyrant, but I would still <laughs> include you. But anyways, we have uh, you know a, a few 
We'll buy a few. I'm saying we've got a bunch of codes to give away. Send them in. We're going to be uh, randomly selecting, and uh, we'll be posting your screenshots on the in the show notes for the 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 episode where we announce the winners. Now, in order to make sure that you have enough time to uh, actually, you know, take a picture, send it in there. Okay, fine. You know what? Take a picture wherever and tell us why it's your favorite Horde or Alliance place. It could be anywhere, but it, you have to give us that that explanation. And if you're representing the Alliance by being, you know, face first in the ground, it, that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, so d- just to give you an idea... Yes, the the outhouse in Grizzly Hills counts for the alliance. If that's your favorite alliance place, you have to tell me why it's an alliance place. Does dollar rent count? Yes, dollar rent counts. If it's your favorite hoarder alliance place, you, again, you have to give me the description. Here's why. the things I award bonus points for. Now, you'll note we are not giving these away on a point system, so it's not going to do you a ton of good, but here's what will get you bonus points. One, if it's naked in a vat of grapes. Two... <laughs> Uh, and this, the, you can stack these for extra bonuses. If your character has a speech bubble coming out of their mouth when you take the screenshot going, Hello, Ben! That will also get you bonus points. Um, <laughs> that's it. Those are the only things that get you bonus points. And again, points. keep in mind, everybody will be randomly chosen as winners. <laughs> Hello, Ben! Bonus points. Cross the board. Doesn't matter where I, you are. So anyways, what... <laughs> you are able to send these screenshots in. We're going to have it going until June 20th. That is Wednesday, June 20th at uh, 11 PM Pacific. That's when we're going to take the last entry. And then we're going to do our random choosing and everything. And the winners will uh, get their, well, we'll probably get their keys either on the 21st or the 22nd, but we'll announce all the winners on the 22nd. What should they put in their email to us, Ben? Um, In their email to us, I would say either uh, Ben. No, I'd say Horde or Alliance. You you can write Horde or Alliance, or you can have Horde, or you can have Alliance. Just something along those lines. Or hello, Ben. Thanks, John. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually trying to, you know, do something so that it's easier to contain and, and track and take care of and everything, but thanks, considering I'm going to be doing all the work for it anyway. So, awesome. Well, you know, I thought about it, and I was like, if he picks one thing, then he's clearly trying to apply a filter of some kind. But then you said Horde or Alliance, which could mean they said Horde, but it could also mean they said or Alliance, but it also means they could write Horde or Alliance in the subject. And now all of a sudden we've got three possibilities. So I figured introducing a fourth wouldn't be crazy. Yeah, whatever. You know what? Just freaking send it into the email. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to help, go with what I said. Anyways, John, where can people find you? Hello, Ben. Oh, if, hi, John. If people want to find... Oh, I didn't record this episode. Uh, if people want to find more from me, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at John underscore Jagger. Uh, you can also catch me talking about Heroes of the Storm on Core. Which is the Heroes of the Storm show I do, part of the Frog Pants Network. Also part of the Frog Pants Network is There Will Be Dungeons. It's um, it's a D&D show with podcasters what? on it. Dungeons! Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Wait, what was your term for people who watch the show? They're there bees. Be. Yeah. That's such a good name. Are you just being a smartass or you, you agree? No, I agree. That's a good name. Yeah, there bees. <laughs> I'm a therapy. Uh oh. I've got a problem here. What's I accidentally the clicked and drug a thing, and now everywhere I take it, it's got a little arrow, and I don't know what it's going to do when I let go of it. <laughs> well, go through the whole thing, and we can finish the show. And I need to just. I need to drag it to some place where it just gives me the no smoking sign. There we go. Found it. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's where you can find me. Oh, also, this weekend is E3. Uh, E3? Yeah, that's the Three. Electronic Entertainment Expo. That's how they came up with the name. Uh, and I'm going to be joining uh, Scott Johnson over on twitch.tv slash frogpants to uh, talk over a lot of those press conferences. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be on all of them or just some of them or most of them, uh, but it'll be, I think Scott's doing them all. Uh, so it'll be some mixture of Scott, 
uh, myself, Patrick Beja, or Brian Dunaway um, all talking over those things. So that should be fun. Oh. So, what? I like all those people. Oh, thank you. I'm part of those people. And yeah. That, that was nice of you to say. You should put Horn or Hor, 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 <laughs> Dang it, I can't talk. I said a, a bad word in there. You should put Hoarder Alliance in your subject because Ben's being nice. Um, anyway, twitch.tv slash frogpants. This has been the longest plug ever. I'm sorry, everybody. This is just ridiculous. It could be worse. I'm not helping it any by making it continue to go, but I'm not just going to point out it's long. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> ben. Yes, John. Save us. If you're looking for me, and I don't know why you would want to, you can always find me on Twitter. I am at Ben the Mage. Gets so grumpy. I do a show with a looter called Battle Pets, uh, where we talk about Battle Pets in the World of Warcraft. Um, battle, battle Pets! I, battle pets. I am going to start streaming soon. Uh, there's, uh, like, life stuff that needs to finish up and everything. But, uh, John, did I tell you what, what game I'm probably going to start streaming? Is it Chrono Trigger? It is not Chrono Trigger. It it is uh it's The Last of Us. Oh. I haven't played that. And if it's scary at all, you know how I am. This you all should watch this. This is going to be good. <laughs> Thanks. It's oh it's not that scary. I know that made it sound like oh it's a yeah. terrifying game. It's not that scary. It's tense okay. at times, but okay. I well, just I've think you Resident will play it will be fun. Resident Evils, so I figured, you know, this will be kind of somewhat similar, maybe. I don't know. I think it's a yeah. good choice for you to stream. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I'm thinking I'm probably going to do that next. Um, but I don't know when that's going to be starting yet. But, uh, you know, follow me on Twitch. I'm at twitch.tv slash Ben Bumhofer. That'll, you know, I think announce when I'm streaming and stuff. So hopefully. But anyways, uh, this show, Azroth Roundtable, you can find us on Twitter. We are at AzrothRT. Uh, make sure you send those entries to AzrothRoundtable at gmail.com. I realized that I didn't even say where to send them before. So holy crap. <laughs> Azeroth Roundtable at gmail.com. Send in your screenshots of your favorite horde or alliance uh, hub, town, city, or just place and tell us why it's your favorite. Yeah, good. We got that. Every episode is on azerothroundtable.com. Also on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, and a bunch of other places and everything. Uh, if you like this episode and you just found us, hey, Check out the backlog. There's some good episodes in there. Some. <laughs> the hype is real. Woo! Let's board the hype train. Choo, choo. And uh, yeah, that, that that's about all it, all that I have. John, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Hi, everybody. Boy, we had fun today, right? Right. I did. Uh, did you say you did or didn't? I did. I did. Okay, great. I'm glad both of you are on board with this. Choo choo. <laughs> doot doot. Hype train rolling out of the station. And thanks to you, we get to keep this train moving. Because this train doesn't burn coal, it burns cold hard cash. Cash that's supplied generously by our, by our patrons at patreon.com slash AzerothRT. And uh, we appreciate you. And there's a group of you that we thank every episode for going above and beyond. I mean, we said a little help would be nice, but these people said you guys clearly need more help than you're letting on. So a big thank you to Chris B, Frasley S, Crin, Haster, Mimi H, Aaron, and Simon. Thank you for your patronage. Uh, and Ben uh, has a special salute for you. I don't know why he flipped you off, but... I didn't. I... Oh, okay. Saluted. I gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Jeez, don't make me sound like a jerk or something. We appreciate you. Toot toot. It was a loving flip off, like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I didn't flip anybody off. I'll flip you off. <laughs> Once again, if you want to support us, patreon.com slash AzerothRT is the place to do it. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Ro. Thank you to Ben. I don't know why I'm doing this part. Ben's making a face at me. He doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> So thanks for listening, everybody. It's been a fantastic Friday night. Be good to each other, and we'll talk to you later. Toot toot. <laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> and that's a podcast episode. Yay. Good job, toot See? toot, John. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> so, so good job recording, John.
Yeah, I didn't record it. <laughs> That's okay. I recorded stream. it. Yeah, we just will record off Twitch. It's fine. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. And it won't <laughs> be the last. <laughs> <laughs> Toot, toot. Uh. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's saved in the right place. I don't have to like freak out and nearly pee myself. Woo. Oh, man. That's uh. that still a horrible, horrible time that happened with Battle Pets. We recorded an entire episode and it saved somewhere else. And I'm like, oh, my God, it didn't save. And then I found it. That happened to me. One of the shows I did when you were out of town. Oh. I don't remember which one, but I wasn't used to recording it because it was... At the time that I was also doing Parallel Words, and so it saved where I save all my Parallel Words episodes, <laughs> but it wasn't where I had been planning for it to be, and uh, I was freaking out because I discovered it. Like, everybody was already off the call, so if we had had to re-record it, it would have been just me like, sorry guys, there's no show, I messed up. I, I like uh, World of Warcraft, <laughs> do you? Yes, I do. Oh, thank you, guest. <laughs> Frankly, I think World of Warcraft sucks balls. Oh, please tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, chat room, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. It was uh, very nice of you. Yes. So for the description for this episode, John, uh, I, I have Ben and John are joined by Roe to talk about quest lines, artifact fishing poles, and love. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope love is in there somewhere. So. <laughs> Oh, I always include love. Love. It goes into uh, all the shows we make. Are we going with pizza and wings? Oh, yeah. That's the episode title. Sargeras <laughs> pizza and wings. Let me see. I'm going to find a, the commercial for it so you can hear it. No, we're all about it, Telenroid. We, uh, uh, you can come in here and talk about Cox all you want. <laughs> Join our Discord. That's <laughs> right. Um, it's all, it's all good. Okay. So I've got a couple different commercials. I want the this one where the... they sing. Well, I'm trying to find it. I, there's <laughs> one that's 30 seconds long and I've got two that are a minute long. Which one should I go for? Uh, 30 seconds. I feel like it's a short song. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry if this blows your eardrums out. It is not my intention. Sardella's right at the beginning. Writing 25 years. Ah, that's good enough. <laughs> Sargeras pizza and wings. Yeah, see, yes. it, 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 it's right I like there it. every single time we hear it. <laughs> yeah. Sardella's pizza and wings. Yep, I cannot hear that guy's name. And he's like the ultimate big bad, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if someone wants to send us fan art of Sargeras uh, selling pizza and wings. I feel like Draven Dresden's all over this. I would not be surprised, actually. <laughs> I uh, I ordered it, from it, Sardella's recently. It's not that bad. It, it's actually kind of good. Then it got kind of crappy for a little bit. Is it, bit, <laughs> is it good then? I didn't like the wings, which made me wonder why they put it in the song. See, we go with Barrows. Barrows is good. I love Barrows. I like that, to get... It's perfect. <laughs> so I shouldn't admit to this. So my favorite... Admit. My favorite pizza and uh, chicken place was uh, in California where I grew up called uh, Shakey's. Oh, like uh, Cartman, Shakey's Pizza. Yep. Okay, John, what are you not admitting? <laughs> just, just bends immediately right back to it. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, so the reason I don't always get borrows is because, and this may have changed, but they don't deliver drinks. And sometimes I order pizza because I want a drink more than I actually want the pizza itself. Oh, wow. Sardellas pizza and wings. Only Sardellas makes my favorite things. We're. Yeah. We're. I figured that was a, uh, that was a good time. Oh, sorry, uh, gorillas. We won't talk about pizza and wings anymore. We just might sing about it, though. <laughs> I'm going to catch a Magikarp. Oh, is that... Then you only have one more to catch, right? 
Uh, maybe. <laughs> Assuming I said yeah. the right number when I said a number earlier. You said 398 out of 400. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes you lie about things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Knowing at, yeah, I'm at 395. I was close. Uh, oh. For not looking at it, I was close. So I don't know if you guys saw or not, but halfway through the show, a gnat landed in my coffee. Ooh. It's just, it it's dead in there right now. And I'm so sad because I have a half a cup of coffee sitting in front of me that I used to want to drink. I, there's a gnat in here somewhere too. I was watching him fly around during the show and I was, he, he's been bugging me. So there would have uh, been a clap. Uh, Wait, Ben, Ben. Yes. Would you say it died of natural causes? Boo. <laughs> no. Oh, this man. Oh, I got a whale. I'm going to get a whale. Oh, there's a totodile over there, too. So my coworker, um, he he plays Pokemon Go, and apparently the whale, you can get a shiny version, and the shiny version of the whale is purple, and if hmm. he catches him, he's going to call him Thanos. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because of his chin. Yeah. He's got the chin. He's got the Thanos chin going. Uh, man, I kind of want to. Maybe tomorrow I'll order from uh, what's it's the the Barrows. Do they are have you, drinks? Am are I, you sure you don't want to uh, order from? Sardellas pizza and wings. Only sardellas makes my favorite things. This fucking mudkip will not stay in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> um i think borrows does i mean i think we've ordered like at least a two liter or something from them before yeah but i don't want a two liter two liters are fun for the first little bit but then they suck yeah. oh my god john there are so many like water pokemon around my apartment right now <laughs> i know the water events are fun because we live in a desert so it's all pokemon we never see like ever Okay, so I I only played Pokemon Go the first few weeks that it came out, and I know they've like changed it and updated it a ton lately. So the type of Pokemon you catch, they really do try to make it tied to the terrain that you live in. Oh, that's how it's always been. Yeah, to, uh, to at we least got... a degree. I mean, yeah, I mean, we get mostly rock, normal, and fire type here. Right. So, like, to get grass type, you'd probably need to be more like in uh washington or seattle where you'd find like grass and water type yeah i mean we could go to like a park and maybe find oh, it yeah. but like like tempe town lake there's water pokemon like apparently that's where dratinis are yeah i have a few dratinis but i don't i don't want to go to tempe town lake just to catch dratinis i want to put in minimal effort to pokemon go like yeah. a million Pokemon spawn in my apartment, which is super nice and convenient for me. And so I don't really want to put in much more effort than that. So you're really more of a Pokemon stay. Yeah. I'm like a Pokemon sit in your room and play other games while you play this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, Do you guys have any interest in the, the whole Pokemon Pikachu, Pokemon Eevee? I know nothing about it, but yes. Yeah, it seems all right. Like I have the serious issue with Pokemon. I always get it, and I never, ever really finish it or even come close. Yeah, I hmm. think the only one I've ever finished was uh, the original Red and Blue. Well, I guess, and these are supposed to be highly based on, like, the yellow, the original yellow version of the game. Yeah, it's back in Kanto with the, the original, original one I play. Yeah. So I think that's where my interest is. But they picked two stupid Pokemon for the start, because I don't care about Pikachu, and... I guess I like Eevee, but I really only like Eevee's evolutions. I like Eevee a bunch. And that's a long time to spend with Eevee before you can evolve him. I'm mm -hmm. cool with that. And Eevee's always a her. In my head. Okay, whatever. I gendered him properly. It, well, technically, Pokemon don't have genders unless they specifically have genders. Yeah, but they went through and added genders to, like, all of them. I know, it was weird, right? But did you see they've, like, made gender noticeable on Pikachu? Like, it's a thing you yeah, can see? Yeah. What's up with that? 
Yeah, I've got a male and a, and a female Pikachu. I think that I have both of them with Ash hats. I have a shitload of Pikachu thanks to Pokemon Go because they put hats on them constantly. And the problem is, is that not only do they give them hats, but then the evolutions of them also have hats. So I have mm. to get a male Pikachu with a hat and a female Pikachu with a hat. But it's not enough. I also have to get a second male Pikachu with a hat that I can evolve into a Raichu with a hat. And a s no, just the one, because I don't think there's a male female version of Raichu. So I think I'm okay there. This is Can the you can you buy hats? No. You just have to oh. you just have to pray. It's just a prayer related thing. And I'm sure the chat loves hearing us talk about that. You know, we just recorded a World of Warcraft podcast for over an hour, and I feel like now we're being nerdy. <laughs> Me too. I totally could have had an opportunity to tease the whole God of War thing tomorrow, and I didn't. Oh, you could have. Shit. We can record something that Ben can put at the end. He won't because he doesn't want to edit, but we can at do it. Again. I just have to open up Audacity again. But you said no, so I'm not going to worry about it. Ha -ha. But we would have made it go. seem so natural. I would have gone, bro. And yes, And you John. would have plugged your... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, oh, Ben. Hello, bro. And then I would have been like, hi, John. Oh, my God. John, we're going to get a Sargeras pizza and wings in the next uh, 24 hours. What? Really? Wait, what are Look you talking about? We're getting a video <laughs> within 24 hours. You'll get a video in the 24 hours. Great. Great. Uh, of what? Sardella's pizza and wings. Only Sardella's makes my favorite things. I hate the way Great. he says pizza. Play it again. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I will laugh my butt off if we get a cease and desist on this episode. <laughs> okay, anyways, here we go. So you don't like it? He goes, pizza. Yeah, he says, pizza. 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 Sardella's pizza and wings. <laughs> like, uh, let, let's find where the, the song ends. Yeah. And hand delivered. Sardella's pizza and wings. <laughs> Only Sardella's makes my favorite thing. Sardella's. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so glad that we could share that with everybody. See, if you just like the back end part, you could play the whole thing. Yeah, I got to find it like exactly. I got to find the part where the little baby is delivering a pizza. Sardellas, beats and wings. Only Sardellas makes my favorite things. Sardellas. Or be really good at sound editing and then do the little dee -dee 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 -dee, and then the back end part. <laughs> yeah, that's what we got to do. Sardellas, beats, and wings. I hope we got this stuck in everybody's head. <laughs> it's going to be stuck in my head for the next 48 hours for sure. And then you all can enjoy when other people say Sargeras and you get Sargeras, pizza, and wings. Wait, what's stuck in everybody's head? Sardellas, beats, and wings. <laughs> oh, Sardellas makes my favorite things. Sardellas. Ah. Uh. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, the more I'm listening to it, the more I'm just hearing Sargeras now. Yep. <laughs> oh, play it one more time. I haven't even gotten into a Yanny Laurel situation with it yet. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Here we go. Sardellas, beads, and wings. <laughs> Only Sardellas makes my favorite things. Sardellas. I mean, I still hear Sardellas, but it's Dang all it. All I hear is... Oh, Yanny Laura. I don't know. I don't even remember <laughs> when it's supposed to be and which one I heard. should have just yeah. said, all I hear is Yanny. Yeah. Yanny. Yeah. Yanny. 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 Marl. Marl. Oh my god, it's a Marlock. <laughs> that's what they've been saying this entire ben, time. Ben! That's why they get to bring up during pre show or post show. Until now, Ben. Ah! Did you see the newest Hearthstone cinematic? Yes! That was pretty awesome. It's sad. Poor Murloc. Yeah. Have you seen it, John? No. Oh, you need to see it. 
pay particular attention to the background when the dude is dusting cards. I saw a gif of the Murloc. OK. Yeah. So... OK, cool. I, OK, maybe it's just me, but it feels like their 3D take on their take on a Hearthstone at CGI anime Murloc. I look at that and I feel like it's inspired from John's Murloc. I mean, oh, no. I'm going to say yes, because it'll make me feel good. Well, yeah, of, uh, of course, I, but it has a very John Jagger Murloc look to it, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to have a uh, new avatar soon. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a while ago, um, someone posted on Twitter saying, hey, I can turn you into a Murloc. I'm, <laughs> commissions are open and stuff. So I totally have someone turning me into a Murloc, and I've seen preliminary stuff, and it's awesome. Is it a Murloc with a beard and mustache? Ben. And glasses. Wearing an Overwatch shirt. Oh, that's oh. so good. Can I tell you something, Ben, and you promise not to get mad at me? Uh, you can always tell me something. <sighs> can you please just promise not to get mad at me this time? I'll do no. my best. Okay. Because, look, I know, you know, kids are cruel, and you grew <laughs> up with your last name being Bumhofer, and you've probably yeah. heard every joke under the sun. Mm -hmm. But I can't change the fact that you said I'm getting a new avatar <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know why the image of a big hairy butt and the word Hoffer written at the bottom <laughs> popped into my head as your avatar. <laughs> no, that wouldn't make me mad, dude. I don't care. It made me laugh. It brought me joy. But you know what? People shouldn't make fun of your name. I'm used to it. It just happens. I know, but that's still not okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so I don't, in the preliminary, I don't have a beard, but I do have glasses and I've got a corgi standing next to me. Oh, look at that. You got a corgi. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait till she's done. It's going to be awesome. Is it a mount corgi that you can ride because you're a little murloc? No, it is not, but it, it comes up to my like chest. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm excited for it. it. And she's like, okay, what colors do you want to be? Because, you know, there's different Murloc colors and stuff. So I'm like, I'm going to be light blue and orange. And they're the Spitfire colors. Ah. I'm like totally mixing everything in there. I'm excited. I'm spamming Murlocs in the channel because you've got me excited. I like I Murlocs. Uh, currently in Slack, not in Twitter, but in Slack, uh, that's basically my avatar. I put a background to it. but Which one? The bottom one? The, uh, yeah, the Stanley. Oh, so wait, how many are you an affiliate now, John? No, it's, these are Scott's. He added them to his. Oh, channel. OK. So I like I saw that I saw the emote titled Revan D. Mergle, and I'm like, wait, when have you been streaming on Twitch? <laughs> yeah, Scott went through and added all of these. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Saw Dallas beats and wings. Only saw Dallas makes my favorite things. Saw Dallas. Sorry, I slipped. Okay, I like how there's two versions of Stanley. <laughs> oh, wait, I am an affiliate. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's me. Okay. Scott's a partner. I'm I was going to say, when did that change, John? So those are, those are mine. They should take it away from me. I haven't streamed in a while. But that's fine. Also, I'm apparently subscribed to Bo's channel, and I've been too lazy to cancel it, so I keep getting billed every month. That's okay. Hey, I, I've... friend. <laughs> I, I've been uh, subscribed to Jocelyn's channel for like four months in a row now. <laughs> I yeah, but she only... streams. She's doing well, something. Yeah. Well, no, no, but I mean, like, usually when I like subscribe, like the way I do my Twitch subscriptions normally is I'll subscribe to like a different channel each month. And the past three months, I haven't gone to a different one. I've just stayed sub to Joss's. So. Oh, I gotcha. So the last thing Bo streamed was himself on a train. Looking into the camera like a fucking bird that just saw his own reflection for the first time. <laughs> well, to be fair, did he just see his reflection for the first time? I mean, maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's possible. This is Bo we're talking about. <laughs> this is yellow Gatorade Bo. Yeah. <laughs> Eating a burger out of a bush Bo. To be fair, though, I've like revisited the yellow Gatorade and it's pretty fantastic. It is good. I've gotten a shitload of yellow Gatorade since that trip because it is delicious. He's not wrong. It's like drinking a delicious pie of some kind. Yeah, I'm really glad that he reminded me of it. So I'm like, I need to get some Gatorade. Ooh, yellow. 
I just found the Twitter account of the guy who made that Hearthstone animated short. Oh. Was it his me? Na- no. Uh, his name is Brian Horn, and his Twitter handle is at Ovaltines. More Ovaltines, please. <laughs> Sardellas, beads, and wings. Only Sardellas makes my favorite things. Sardellas. Oh, I'm so happy you did that. I, that's what I wanted, but I was like, it's not funny if I ask for it, so I just gotta hope that Ben does it. <laughs> that's probably the last one I'm gonna do because I'm getting sick of it now. Uh, You're getting yeah. sick of what? Oh, you know. Spider Man! Sardellas, beads, and wings. Only Sardellas makes my favorite things. Sardellas! Well, that's going to be a show, folks. Thank you, everybody, for joining (laughs) us tonight. You all have a fantastic weekend. Spider-Man! Spider-Man. He's here. (laughs) Thanks, Ben. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. (laughs)